All right, guys, welcome. I just got a little project here I want to show you. So this is my Red Cat Gen 7. Now, of course, I've had the new body on here. This is the Pro-Line Toyota 4Runner body. Cool little paint job on there, and I did some magnetic body mounts. So you got no posts sticking up. So I'm going to pull that off. I did some crazy upgrades to this thing underneath. Something I've never done before. So we still got all the stock electronics, motor, ESC, receiver, stock gearing, drive shafts. But I didn't like those stock axles on there. They were huge. Now there's plastic, but they're very strong because they're so huge. They just don't look very scale. So what did I do? I went ahead and put some metal portal axles on there. These are actually for a Capra. So they're fantastic, quite heavy, all metal. I love them. Big fan. Look at those bad boys, huh? Gosh, they look good. So I had to do some trimming and some slight modifications to get them to fit up on the front there. So I had to move the top of the two suspension arms back just a touch here. They were down and over one. In the front, the same thing. They were way down, actually down in here there's a hole right there you can see move them up to the top in the front here also to make them nice and straight i had to relocate the battery tray that was down here but with everything being so low and i did take the springs off of the shocks so we're running no springs on these bad boys now just shocks very light oil so they're setting all the way down 100 percent droop we call that and then the battery tray got moved up because it was hitting against the drive shaft. Looks like it actually had been hitting there for a while because there's some marks where it was rubbing. So I think even with the stock axles, that drive shaft, when it was fully compressed suspension wise, was rubbing against the bottom of the battery tray. So I moved that. Then we added this killer front bumper on here. Nice metal front bumper. Check that bad boy out. I also took off the rear bumper just because it looked goofy with the nice metal front bumper and the plastic rear. Um, but these came also, these had a servo and axle mount that was there. It just didn't line up exactly with the holes for the servo and axle mount that was on the original axles. So we had to do a couple specialty drilled holes in there. Got that all mounted up perfect. That's still the stock servo even. We're going to get this out for a test run pretty quick. Uh, I did do a, a little cruise around the house just to make sure everything's uh, lined up nice and not binding. And it seems to be working fantastically. So I'm happy about that. Um, hopefully this is going to be quite the upgrade. Of course, it added a lot of weight down low. Um, but it did raise up the center of gravity just a touch with the portals. because That lifts it up and that's why I dropped the suspension down. So this bad boy is ready for a test run. Now, I do have the same tires that I had on it before. These are a little narrow, uh, but they do, because of the axles, these portals are a little bit wider, of course, than the stock regular axles. Um, they do stick out a little bit on the side, so I may have to do some more body trimming. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I also have some deep dishes I could put on there that I think would make these stick out far enough where they wouldn't touch the body at all and give it a super wide stance. We'll see how it all goes on our first test run, see what we want to switch out. Um, I'm also thinking about flipping the shocks upside down. Some people do that. It's a little more weight up here than down here. I also have different sets of shocks I can put on here. I have an 80 millimeter set that I just got um, and been wanting to try out. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Has anybody else done these uh, metal portals on their cars? Um, obviously, if you have, let me know. I really would like to 
find out how these all work for people. And um, also the gearing, I'm going to have to test that out a little as well because I'm pretty sure with the portal gears in there, it drops the gearing down a bit too. This could really make this quite the slow crawler. We'll find out when we take it out. It's been raining the last couple days. Um, and of course, rock crawling when it's raining out, not so much fun. So we'll figure that out. Not a huge deal. But hope you guys enjoyed. Of course, any questions about this, go ahead and ask in the comments. Um, I definitely did have to trim some other stuff for the uh, suspension rods meet. As you can see down in there, this was all black. And uh, because of the paint on there, it made the spots for the little metal slides to go in a little tight so i had to take my dremel tool and i just uh, pretty much shimmed off the, the paint so i could fit those little metal slider pieces on the ends of the um, suspension shock there and the suspension arm so both those spots the two center spots and then both spots on the other side had to be honed out um, to fit these in and then of course like i said i had to drill two new holes for the servo mount to go in but I made that work as well. Uh, it came with the arm, steering arm, so I just connected those up to my stock servo, um, which also still has a plastic horn, I just realized, uh, when I was doing this. But we're going to leave it because it seems to work pretty fantastic and hasn't broke yet. So we'll see how this all works. Like I said, just a project, something different. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I still got the old one sitting right here, ready to go. I can just pop them right back on. I also had to cut the... Body mounts that came down, they were still full length, so they came all the way down and almost touched um, the suspension rods there. So I cut trim those up too. Just a few little things, you know, you always gotta adjust and do your stuff. One thing I am noticing as it's sitting here now is that the shocks are kind of inward now. Now they're still not touching the frame, um, but very close. There's just a hair there. And that's all the way down, so I guess when they go up, I don't know. We'll see. Back's good. Front seems a little touchy there. What a cool look. I love this. Like I said, this setting all the way down on the shocks like that. I'm hoping that's going to help a lot with some stuff, or it's going to suck. So is anybody else running shocks without springs? Is anybody else running metal, these metal portals for an actual Capra on a Gen 7? Um, and have you had any problems? And if you have, let me know. I also just realized I have the front tires on backwards tread style and the back tires are on normal tread style. So we'll have to swap those around too. I think I got so excited when I finally finished putting it all together because like I said, it was a lot of trimming and uh, power tools that came out. Holes had to be drilled, um, adjusted suspension uh, links, the top ones especially. Also, these portal axles, I can't say anything about them. They are nice metal. They are heavy and they are beautiful. Um, but there was no grease in them, or if there was, it was a very minuscule amount. So I did pull them apart and grease up, um, the diff and, uh, the portals. So that's much better. Um, so if anybody does buy those, make sure you're greasing them up before you put them on. Cause if you don't, it's just going to make things worse faster. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. Get out there, have some fun.